So you've seen these guys before. Have you had a good day so far? Yeah? Awesome. Um, this panel is going to be about bug bounties. Over the last couple of years, we've seen an explosion in crowdsourced security, bug bounty uh, being at the foremost. Thank you. Finally. Mm. That's good stuff. Now, you've all been on different ends of the bug bounty spectrum. I mean, Mark, you host a bug bounty program. Friends, you're obviously a bug bounty hunter, and Ada does bug bounty hunting as well, only you do it mostly in open source projects. Is that fair yeah, to say? It's not really bounties, no though. No bounties, no, no. Right. So, as this explosion in crowdsource security continues to move forward, where do you think bug bounties are going to end up? How, where, what, will we, what will we see in like five years from now? Just go ahead, anyone. Uh, okay, I'll start uh, because. Yeah. Um, so, uh, basically, what bug bounties are. Uh, I mean, it's uh, it's a pretty big difference between bug bounties and bug bounties to start with, uh, and I think we need to actually define that if we're going to have a meaningful <laughs> debate. Because when when Microsoft, uh, who was like at the forefront of this, uh, actually uh, introduced their bug bounty, it was because researchers were complaining that Microsoft seem to expect people to report bugs for free. And this was not uh, web bugs. This was like uh, buffer overflows in Internet Explorer and th that kind. So bugs that typically takes a little bit longer to both find and develop a working expo exploit for. What we're talking about now, it, I mean, the bug bounty scene today is like 90, 95% web services or web pages, web services, like. So are we talking about everything, or are we talking about the majority, or what are we talking about? Sure. All right. <laughs> that no, all of the above. Yeah. Um, we'll see what we get yeah. into, of yeah. course. There's no set rules okay. to this so debate. I basically think that bug bounties uh, are, to some degree, is going to replace traditional pen testing, uh, because uh, it's basically the same thing, but without you know actually having pen testers on staff. Uh, but it's mostly black box. I know that Bugcrowd, for example, does invites where they provide more information about the target. But we can't really have a debate about that because that is actually a pen test company with freelancers and a different e economic model, so there's basically no difference except there are more people. Mm -hmm. uh, but the thing that I'm concerned uh, about, because um, my main goal is to like uh, think about how do we actually improve security overall, not like how can we get people to have fun and earn a lot of money at the same time. That's also good. I, I'm not against that, but we shouldn't do it at the expense of actually improving s security. And I am kind of like, for a couple of years, I've been skeptical about how um, useful traditional pen testing actually is, because it's like putting Band-Aid on someone who suffers from hemophilia, which is bleeding disorder. That, you know, it doesn't work. I mean, one guy is patching bugs that are being reported, and another one is producing the same type of bugs. Would you guys agree that penetration testing doesn't work? We need to actually have some sort work? of meaningful flow. Otherwise, yeah, it won't work. All right, so penetration testing doesn't work in that context. Would you guys agree? I mean, um, the biggest difference between bug bounties and penetration tests is the expectations. Like, being a part of a bug bounty program, you don't have any expectations at all. So the company can't really expect you to look. Like the only hope they have is that their target is as interesting as it gets for you to actually spend time on. Like Google are doing this researchers grant. With, like they realized already that there's no way for us to actually be the most attractive company to, to spend time on looking for vulnerabilities. So let's take the good, like the, the best people 
pay them a monthly f like monthly fee. Yeah, yeah. The best people. Yeah, best people. Also, thanks. No, no, but like pay the money just for looking, and I think that's uh, that's the biggest problem. Every time you talk about talk with these marketplaces, Cinec, HackerOne, Bug Crowd, the problem is that they can't really like talk with the customer and say like, okay, so how much time was spent on your target? Like, did people actually look? Exactly. That is yeah. also something that I thought about because when I'm I'm not going to you know. Uh, uh, do like a company pitch or something, but when when I get assigned to looking at something, uh, the fact that I I tell my client that I've looked at this and I've read all the code and I've checked all those things yeah. and I didn't really find anything. That's that, also that is yeah. also yeah. of value because that means mm, we did this. Correctly, can we apply yes. this on other areas? And you, you don't get you that. You don't really get no, that. No, no, absolutely not. And some of them trying to solve it. Like Synac has this VPN solution where you're tunneling all the the things that you're doing through them, so they can actually start calculating like coverage and stuff like that. But but so so they're like trying to figure it out, and um, which makes sense. But that's just because they want to be able to show the customers that somebody was actually looking for stuff. This is kind of interesting because I could never work like that. I would be of course I, not. I, paranoid. I, I, I would be like, <laughs> they're going to laugh at me. I'm doing so much yeah. ridiculous what stuff. What the hell are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, I got a question from Mark because you've been on the other side of this. You might say running a bug bounty program. How do you think that bug bounties complement internal security reviews? So, is this working? Uh, it might have you might have to turn it on. Got the, got the green light. Really? Yeah. All right. Someone do something. No, no. There it is. Yeah. You might have to hold it closer. Who knows? Closer, yeah. Yeah, yeah. really close. So, we, we kind of um, did something slightly different. Um, we don't really view bug bounty as like the silver bullet or, or the panacea. Yeah, hold it right, like this. Like right here? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it got weird, guys. Yeah, it, it just feels strange. Um, moving on really swiftly. So we, we never really wanted a uh, Nessus or an NMAP report right when we do a penetration test. So we don't actually call them penetration tests, we call them attack simulations. And if you look at the RFC stuff, or if you vaguely remember it from when I talked about it this morning, we've actually uh, written in pseudocode what an attack simulation should look like when we launch um, various elements of our infrastructure or our products. And that actually starts, we actually do that with one vendor. Um, possibly two, and we've built like those relationships so that it's not a vendor, it's actually a partner, and they're not like rioters in terms of like, you know, they follow our culture totally, but they get it, they get what's important to us, and they get how we release products, and they also get what player focus and player experience is. So we actually used our own feedback culture and our RFC process to come up with something like that, so it's kind of different. So we have a lot of it actually down to actual pseudocode or other people might call it a process. And again, we, re we realize it's not gonna be 100% coverage. Similarly with the bug bounty, it's not gonna be 100% coverage, but what you get with the attack simulation is you get someone who's very familiar with your infrastructure, um, but they may not be the best XSS or the best SQLI or the best, you know, uh, similarly if you do like a secure code review, which we also have fairly um, sort of not automated, but follows a particular structure. You know, they may not be the best C++ person to spot or buffer overflow, but you actually get that to a degree with the bug bounty. Like you get the best XSS person looking at some absolutely crazy shit that you never knew existed. And it's really like in security, we talk about defense in depth a lot. And it's kind of similar to that and that no one tool is actually going to solve everything. And that's the way I think Bug Bounty is going to go. It's just going to become another tool in the arsenal of defenders. Yeah. And you, you got to realize that with Bug Bounty, you set your scope right. But, and there's going to be a lot of wasters that are going to find things that you're not interested in. 
And then you're going to have the best researchers who we talked about earlier in terms of providing feedback. You listen to that feedback, but also you got to be prepared that some of those best researchers are the best researchers because they kind of skirt the borders of what your scope actually is, mm. right? So you got to be lenient on that as well. And you got to be prepared for them finding stuff that you're never going to find. But it's really just another kind of tool in your arsenal, and it can only deliver so much, and you're never going to get 100% coverage. But in my view, it's better being in a bug bounty program than not getting it right, because uh, essentially what it is is now you're getting the report. They were scanning you anyway. Yeah. They were reversing your code. You just didn't know. Like, now you know, right? So one of the things we did is we actually increased the minimum payment from 50 to 250, right? So talking about the point the guys were making is like you don't know how long a person has spent, right? But you want to reward them because you want them to still be interested. You want them to come back. So one of the things as well that we recently did is we're changing our client. Um, our client is based on Adobe Air, which is a phenomenal piece of technology. Uh, that, that's a joke. <laughs> uh, you should you should totally do it in like Node.js instead. Yeah, I, I hear. Pro totally submit something. I was thinking Java, like Java on the client. That works really well. That's uh, also good. With Flash. Old Java. Yeah, Flash and Java. Java, Java 6. Too. Java 6 on Safari yeah. 6 as well. Uh, yeah. I'll totally <laughs> pop calc. What was I saying? <laughs> um, so what we've done with the lead client update, which is our new client, it's, we've actually blogged about it extensively on engineering.riotgames.com, but we've also uh, released it to people like this guy. So I don't actually know if he's looked at it. Uh, given you're also in our research program, you should have access to it, right? So we, we're incentivizing people to actually yeah. look at it as opposed to, you know, hiding away from it. Yeah, that makes sense. Does that answer the question? Yeah, I think so. I'm not sure I what the original question was. But I, I can't can remember I, either. Can I? Yes, jump in, please. No. I, think, I think this this whole thing with actually raising the rewards uh, is probably a good way to go to reduce the noise. I mean, and to actually get people to look at the things that you think is interesting. That, I mean, if you're concerned about a certain function, you could theoretically at least raise the rewards for that function, and you get more people looking yeah. at it. So that's actually a really good, good way to do it. And that would uh, potentially, no, it wouldn't. It would probably maybe actually increase the noise because people would want the money. Did you just do a 180? What? Yeah, just turn around. Yeah, yeah changed. I, did, I did a 360. It's no, 180. 360. <laughs> uh, that would be a full circle. Different. I think he argued against I would, I would like <laughs> yeah. to. I would, yeah. I, would like to, I would like for the audience to take note of it. At one point in my life, I could do an Ollie 360. Awesome. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's starting to sound I like I don't think I can do that anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's starting to sound like you could do a debate all by yourself. <laughs> yeah. have, have you seen his Twitter? Yeah, I have. <laughs> it's usually just him and the group. Yeah, <laughs> just fighting. I mean, we're no jabbing. No, we're basically patting each other's backs yeah. most of the yeah. time. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, so I want to talk a little bit about the motivation for bounty hunters. Uh, like you've been scanning uh, or uh, searching for bugs in open source projects. You've been looking, I assume, mainly on paying bug bounty uh, projects. Uh, so, when it comes to bug bounties, what is the motivation there? Is it purely monetary? Is there some altruistic aspects? Only money. No, but like I see, like appreciation is, is awesome. Also being a developer from the beginning and then going to security and figuring out that some developers are, have done wrong is of course like you always feels good being smarter than anyone else. Like of course it's ego. Uh, ego boosti boosting, but also like you you did this like as you mentioned, like you did this stuff anyway on companies that didn't allow it. Like now you're able to actually do it, and you don't need to VPN the shit out of yourself to to do it. Now you can actually like use your regular IP without feeling nervous. 
Like, so, so, like, people have hacked, like, you don't need to be a black hat and, like, I'm gonna earn money. And, like, people have fucked up applications before without getting money. Like, now you can do the same thing and you can actually get appreciation. Like, le like I showed you, like, the first interaction I had was just getting a bunch of t-shirts. And that was awesome. I needed t-shirts. So, like, that was good. But, I mean, it's just a maturity of the... Like, as the question we, we had before, and I forgot to like add into that, is that it's like it, you, you think about a company creates a product, and like you, internally you have a bunch of skills to build this product, and you need to like increase the skills internally to build a better product. So you, you teach the team on how to build a better product. This is like in general of the functionality, but also in security. And then you use professionals to see that you built a proper product in terms of security. You, you use pen testers. And then you put the product out there. Like the logical next step would be to allow people to actually tell you if, if you got them so far to put up a public application and being vulnerable at that time, anybody should be able to actually report it back to you. Like it makes so much sense having that last step. So it's a, it's a natural, like the natural pr last proof of concept that your application is secure. I would uh, actually li like, like to point out that as while I'm skeptical about the, the long-term uh, benefits of yeah. bug, bug bounties, I think it's awesome that it has actually uh, made a lot of companies take the step to actually create a vulnerability disclosure process. Yes. Like you, you don't have to get sued all, exactly. all the time. Yeah. With that said, I still think that you shouldn't really just go on the internet and think that it's your right to go look for bugs in any website. No. It's still like, well, uh, but on the other hand, if I buy a car from General yeah. Motors, uh, of course I'm allowed to hack it, it's my car. Yeah. So if you want to sue me, fuck you. Yeah, yeah so sure. Anyway, it's still good <laughs> that they actually have said that we accept vulnerability yeah. reports, uh, but it's kind of redundant because outside of the US they can't sue anyone. No, it doesn't matter. No, you're right. <laughs> so does the same logic work for buying an application you use on your computer, would you say? Yeah. I'm, I mean, Oracle and also <laughs> Microsoft at some point has been actually, you know, really aggressive about when people have reported bugs in their stuff, but this is a really long time ago and people need to let it go because yeah. it's, I mean, Oracle, Oracle still wasn't that, that long time ago, though. but they're, they, they have no teeth. No, no, no. They're Absolutely all talk not. and everyone knows it. So You're breaking the terms. Basically, yeah, <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. so that part I don't, but I agree that it's still good that because sometimes you actually stumble across a bug in a web page yeah. and you're like, well, I didn't even try. And of course you should be able to report it. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's common sense. So I, I, I actually totally agree that bug bounties uh, and KD Missouri yeah. in s specifically has actually done a like, huge work ISO in, standard. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in actually getting that implemented in yeah. a lot of cases because like he she helped um, the Netherlands to actually get all the banks in Netherlands must have a responsible disclosure policy she, she was one actually very involved in that program so basically that means that if you find a vulnerability in a bank in Netherlands all of them have a responsible disclosure policy and most of them are also paying like so all the banks basically have a bug bounty program in Netherlands which yeah. is crazy yeah and I mean this is very good I think we all agree on that but it's sort of different from the uh, from the idea that finding bugs is the way to improve mm -hmm. security mm -hmm. because finding bugs is like of course one way but uh, something that I'm sort of concerned about is that bug bounties bring more people into security, yeah. uh, but they bring it into a very niche area. Yeah. And currently, I don't really see a good way of, of getting people from that niche area into the areas where, where more people are actually needed, because bug finding is not you know, uh, the 
biggest problem in no. security. Security engineering is where people are needed. And yeah. right now, I don't see a good model for actually getting those people into that. And I'm a little, little bit afraid of that if you come from a country uh, like India or something where you don't make a lot of money yeah. and you make a lot of money doing this, you won't have an, a reason to move on no. to no, something right. else. Which I'm, I'm a little bit worried about. Mm? But I think this can be solved, but everyone has to actually want to improve yeah. security. As long as we're stuck in, in like, I find bugs, I make more money than you do, and I mm. work less, and I have but more fun, then like, what do you think about, security like, isn't going to get Google, better. Google had this thing where you get patch rewards. Like, when you actually do patches, yeah. you get yeah. more reward yeah. for, for the yeah. bug. Yeah. Like, and, what do you think uh, about that? And, uh, Microsoft has uh, also has one where the if, sandbox. If, yeah, yeah. If, if if you can actually improve uh, a, a whole system, yeah. security yeah. control, then yeah. you also get money. Yeah. This is the way forward. This is much harder yeah. than what what you and I are doing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, absolutely. But, but, but like, I mean, someone like like. Like, but they say, like always say being Brad on the red Spengler team is from, easy. Like, from GR security, yeah. he should get tons of money. Yeah, he's done so much work, which is really underappreciated. Yeah, uh, and he 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 is like, I will not develop an exploit in my life because it's lame. Mm. It doesn't really help anyone. No. So I really think that we're not really premiering the people that we should that be we premiering. Should. Yeah. Uh, and I think we could all do a little bit better yeah you know, but that. they always say like being in the red team is easy the blue team is the hard thing yeah like uh, preventing uh, stuff I think uh, if you're from Gothenburg uh, Tero is going to uh, do a talk uh, next Thursday at OWASP uh, about how to make defense uh, as fun as uh, offense and you should all go there the, this was not planned to be <laughs> like an announcement <laughs> for good that pitch. But, good pitch but it is still so, uh, yeah, uh, that's, yeah. All right, so uh, do you have something? Like? No, I think you could just come work at Riot. <laughs> ah. <Yeah. laughs> All right. All right that, would, that would make defense more exciting. <laughs> All right, so if anyone didn't hear that, he wants you to come work at Riot. But he actually has a valid point. I mean, you don't actually have to go work at Riot, but you could try to implement what Riot and Etsy and the, yeah. A few others are doing, and it will be really fun. Those guys yeah. are the real ninjas. But, but do you have an, that's a good argument also, because m a lot of my like bug hunting friends, a lot of them has gained jobs being on the blue side instead. Like Bitquark, for example, he he got a job at Tesla, and his job is not only to find bugs with Tesla. He's actually doing stuff to prevent bugs. So yeah, I think it's also a way in to like. I'm, I, I tend but to this talk. is for people who already knew this stuff. <laughs> yeah, but I, I know a bunch of po like people that like joined in through the bug bounty and then got recruited to like Facebook team. Like what? Like the biggest guys in the Facebook security team are guys that hacked Facebook, like found bugs in it. Like so, so there's a bunch of people that gets to the other side just because through the bug bounty and they get recruited because of that. Yeah, yeah so, but I think. I think a lot of it's because the quality of their report, right? Yeah. It's not just about here's a vulnerability, here's the no, next yeah, no, no, yeah, absolutely. There, there are a lot of people that actually go, hey, here's how I would fix it. Yeah. We genuinely have seen a lot of those discussions. Yeah. Like, so the talent is out there and the interest is out there. Yeah. It's just that they're not necessarily the people that are going to tweet or like, you know, do a CFP for DEF CON or like go, hey, fuck you, I dropped another O day. Yeah. But like the talent is actually out there, and there are people that file amazing reports, and then actually get into a genuine discussion that yeah. goes on for ages yeah. with the engineer, yeah. oh, and like cool. watching both sides yeah. learn. I think this is this is actually really important. That's something that I wanted to include in my talk, but couldn't really get in. And this is mainly due about my open source auditing stuff. That. It's not about finding the bugs. It's about reporting them in a way that makes uh, someone fix more than just a bug. Because in, the, in a lot of cases, you're, what you're actually finding is a pattern yeah. of, uh, of not 
actually developing or engineering your your application in 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 a safe way. So if you so as I said, uh, matter most, and this is I'm not saying that this is down to what I reported to them, but they've actually made you know several changes in regards to design, which is the best way to fix things because you're actually mitigating things that haven't even been introduced yet, yeah. which is like the way to go and. This is something, if you want to participate in a bug bounty and you're going to report stuff, don't just find a bug and then report it as soon as you can with a minimal amount of information, yeah. which you will probably do anyway because it's basically the IoT thing. It's first to market. If you don't report it first, you won't get the money. Yeah. But It depends though. Yeah, They're but different. different yeah, they, but they do if different you can things. actually report it and actually you know, analyze the root cause and actually suggest... Uh, like what they should be doing yeah. instead, not just one line, use a random string. Mm. Just you know, actually you know, check what what kind of you know uh, random number generators does this language have? Because a lot of languages have pretty crappy random number generators, mm. which will only introduce another bug. So the main goal of actually reporting bugs should be to not fix the bug, to fix the root cause yeah. of the bug. And this is something that I fear also is like often missing in bug bounties because of the, I um, have to report it first. Yeah. Uh, so, but that's, that's like an economic issue more than yeah. anything else. There's some differences, like some companies, they can actually get the same report twice and they will pick the one that wrote the best report. Yeah. Which is kind of like, they, like you wrote it best, you were not the first one, but you wrote the best yeah, report. You actually understood it. Yeah, exactly. You actually understood the bug. <laughs> and so, on. so how do you, I mean, you said that you get really good reports. What are your ratio, like bad reports, good reports? I, I, I need an exact figure. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, this actual, is going on my blog. Actual percentage. Like how much noise in percent? Whole park figure. Yeah. I think, at the, I think at the start, a vast majority of it was noise, definitely. Um, a lot of clickjacking, a lot of, a lot of you know, automated um, reports. So basically burp scanner yeah. well, issues. Not so much burp scan, it was like Durbuster. Mm -hmm. Durbuster, you know, like free Nessus, free, yeah. not even Nmap, but like, yeah, stuff that's easier than Nmap. Um, so if someone thinks that Nmap's hard, that probably gives you an indication of their skill level. Yeah. Um, so I think as things have calmed down, um, and it's mostly the better researchers that are in, in our program, but we also have a little bit of exclusivity because we have a private program. Yeah. Ours isn't public, so you, you have to be invited into the program. In that case, I would say that it's even more of a traditional pen test. It's Crowdsourced, but to I, I a would, degree, you know. Well, I'd say no because you you can still find something. But you still went public with the blog yeah, post, so you public. are public, but public. you still need to figure out that you should email you guys to yeah. get an invite. So. Yeah, but like if someone emails us and they're not in the Hacker One program, we're not going to go fuck off. No. We we'll go, hey, here's a setup, uh, submit it through that way, and then we'll make sure that the person is a quality researcher. And if the person is much more noise than, than actual fact, um, we'll work with them, we'll give them feedback, and then if they don't improve, we'll kick them out. Uh, yeah. This is also something that I've, I've been, this is not you know, an issue for me personally, but I, I think it's kind, of, it's kind of sad because this is in the industry that I work in and that I care about a lot, but I saw this presentation by a Google guy who handles their vulnerability rewards program, or what it's called, and it was like over 91% is like, yeah. I'm sorry, this is not, not, not a bug. And that is yeah. a terribly high figure. And but it's very common, I would say. Yeah. Someone from HackerOne said that, yeah, we're working on some you know, machine learning algorithms to reduce that. And I think, of, yeah, I mean, economically speaking, that's one way to do it, but if we actually want to have it, an industry that actually knows what they're doing, we should weed that out yeah. 
yeah, on I another think, level. But I, I mean, think, Google. I think we're yeah. able to weed it out because we are a private program. Yeah, yeah, yeah but, to I'm, but, but Google, I mean, the Google team did a cool thing. They they got a guy that started reporting like, on like very very like non interesting reports. So they did they did like this. They emailed him and said, "Can we do a Skype, like one hour Skype together?" And they called him up and spent one hour with him explaining exactly what they were interested in. Like this, this and that, like look for this, like if you can find this, that will be awesome. This hour resulted in him being one of the top ranked hackers of the Google vulnerability he, program. He's a, I think he's actually number two. Yeah. Yeah, Google, yeah. Google oh, told me so, that. So story. they're like, that's really we great. spent one hour with him and he just, ah, that's the things you're gonna, you want me to look for. Yeah. And he was like super. I mean, cool. Having read their scope, I kind of find it hard to, I mean, how can you misinterpret that? I mean, he, he just wanted, I don't know. He's not he, rocket surgery. No, but he, he needed Wait, did some guidance. Did you say guidance. rocket surgery? Yes. Yeah. He it's, needed some it's guidance. A, it's a little bit harder than <coughs> rocket science. Is that harder, or, is that harder than no, brain science? Brain surgery. Brain surgery science. Brain rockets. science, rocket yeah. surgery. Same yeah. thing. Rocket surgery. <laughs> Turns out <laughs> the beers were a bad idea. I think brain science actually exists, so rocket surgery is much more fun. Yeah, rocket surgery. I think <laughs> rocket surgery are the people that go like, yeah, I'm going to fill up on the But oil. I mean, there's I think, I think that's different. That's an Elon Musk decision or something. Yeah. Like, that sounds like something he was like, no time for that. Pass yeah. it off. But now you're, now you're just talking about different ways to learn stuff. Like, some people understand stuff by reading. He learned more about talking about it with yes. the guys for an hour. So. I agree to a certain degree, but 90, more than 91% is more laziness and hoping to get paid than, than, Absolutely. than that. Absolutely. I think. And we should, I mean, I, would, I don't really, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually impacted by this, but if I was running a bug bounty program, and I, I had that sort of noise ratio, I would actually suggest to my bug bounty platform that they would like implement some sort of, if, you, if your ratio is like nine to, to one yeah. or something, then, yeah. then, then, then you're banned for a month. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I mean, because one, listen, one program had the best, actually. <laughs> best solution to this. Uh, uh, one program had this really long description and far down in the description, it said, if you don't include the word orange in your report, it's going to get automatically canceled. <laughs> so they had to read the whole policy, and they had an automation, like if the or word orange is not there, cancel the reports. I had a teacher yeah. who did something s yeah. similar, where like, you have to read everything before you start, and, then and it, it said, bullet just list, go. And then yeah. at the end, yeah. it said, don't do anything yeah. of the above, and everyone started doing that yeah. one. And we, we had the same thing yeah, as well. Yeah, so we hated that teacher. We're all idiots. Yeah. That's kind of a But I, I think that probably works somehow, <laughs> in some sense. I would love to see their noise ratio on reports that has the word orange and is noise. Yeah. I would love that. So Mark, which color are, is Riot going to pick for their reporting? It's going to be orange or red or what are you going to go with? Um, probably R green. Yeah. green. Green. Irish, green. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense. Well, that's cool. All right, cool. Uh, it's about time to wrap this up, actually. That was 35, 40 minutes that flew by. Uh, we have time for one or two questions from the crowd, if there's any out there. There's one here. All right, I'm going to run down with the mic. Ada, you just uh, spoke about maybe canceling your ability to report for like half a month if the noise is too high noise to signal ratio, yeah. Uporn just did that and it was very ill received in the community to the point where they've, just the last week ago, they've gone back and retroactively paid researchers money for other stuff that they found. Would you like to do another 180? Uh, I mean, I don't really know what the background story to this was, uh, but I think I remember seeing something about them uh, changing their scope. Yeah, okay, so in that case, it doesn't really apply because they are actually behaving, they're not actually living up to their word. They said that this and this and this and this is in our scope. People reported that and they removed it from the scope and said noise. Mm. That is, I mean, that is not the researcher's fault. I, I, I actually, I don't want to, I mean, nah, that's beside the point. Uh, but uh, so in that case, uh, no. Um, if they're using a platform, that might happen automatically, but that could be revoked manually. In but I think a lot of it is communication. 
I think what a lot of companies don't do is actually communicate correctly. Um, so hopefully no one will disagree, but I think we actually make a really concrete effort on communicating. There are people in this room whose bug bounties um, I have rejected, and we had a very uh, fruitful and honest discussion. And I think a lot of it is because we were upfront and honest, and we took the feedback on, and they took their feedback, and ultimately the bug bounty program got better for it. Um, yeah, I think it's really down to communication. I think you need to realize too that Riot introduced their bug bounty program after you had an application security program. You had something to actually feed, or you had something to feed it into, which a lot of people don't. A lot of people just start bug bounty programs because, hey, this sounds like an easy way to have a pen test. And then, you know, it's actually like my, my, my example with the band aids and hemophilia that one, one, on, on the one side, you're putting on Band-Aids, and on the other side, you're still bleeding to death. Yeah. So it's like... It's one guy at eBay, actually, like eBay was very, very connected to PayPal. Was he selling old days on eBay? Uh, not, not, not actually, <laughs> no, but he was working for the blue team at eBay. Okay. And I talked with him, and because eBay back then was very connected to PayPal, and PayPal ran, ran a bug bounty program. But there was a lot of assets on PayPal that could be accessed by eBay, and eBay did not run a bug bounty program. So it was a really like interest, a conflict of interest in that sense, where we were able to utilize stuff on eBay, so which nobody reported, and, and then use them. Supply chain. Yeah, absolutely. Stuff, but but yeah. the interesting thing was, I talked with him, and like, why, why the hell do you don't use, like, why don't you do a bug bounty? And the interesting thing was, he was like, you know what will happen? Like, we will get like a report with an XSS, and we're going to get, like, if you insert this in this input box, um, there's an XSS. And what will happen is that the security team here will go to the developer and say, this input box has an XSS. And what will happen, that developer will fix that input yeah. box. That's a really good uh, reason not to have a yeah. bug bounty yeah. before you have something to feed it in. Exactly. So what ha happened then is, then you have 34 other input boxes that nobody cared about, and then it will just be an infinite wheel of, like, throwing out money, uh, like not caring about yeah, the, and not getting better. not fixing Introducing the design issue. That's the back to the ones. root yeah. causes. It's yeah. important. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's, that's also something that I feel that a lot of the entrepreneurism, if that's a word, in bug bounties is actually, if I'm, if I'm allowed to be cynical, I have had three beers, so I'm allowed to be cynical, uh, is actually taking advantage of people's poor security practices instead of actually helping them yeah. improve their security practices, which I don't like either. But this is a problem that has existed longer. Yeah. I mean, that's a fantastic but problem. But I, I, I too, very so. much think it's the, the responsibility of the company, not the researchers, though. It is, but we are supposed to be the subject matter experts, and we're supposed to help them. We're not just supposed to look yeah, to our own but, best but interests. But we, we follow the, the no, rules no, that no, they set now up. Now we're going to have a fight. No. No. So, uh, no if you're no, waiting now, for this. No. Uh, this is where things if get started. If you're sensitive like, to blood. Seriously. No. <laughs> but I mean, if they put up rules, and you follow those rules, and you do what they say, like the expectations on the researchers should not be higher than the actual expectations that they want from you. So no, but I mean, and this is this is probably where our where where our, our opinions really yeah maybe differ. Yeah. We, uh, the thing is that me and France have discussed this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Unfortunately, we got to this discussion yeah. just and when we have to end it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> really I'm sorry. sorry. But sorry. yeah, okay. Um, we'll have to pick it up again at some later point. You um, mean after beers? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Find these guys after dinner. Uh, yeah. Hash it out. Yeah. All right. Uh, that was the Good last the talk. Blood. And, and you will find me uh, by the trail of dead friends. <laughs> <laughs> no! All right, that was the last talk for today. In about 10 minutes, we're going to wrap up. Uh, but first, let me please thank all our speakers, and especially friends, Andreas and Mark. Yeah, hug, friendly hug. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks.